What's up everybody, I'm Ryan Long, and today we are going to be talking about Google Glass. First off, I would like to say how I was able to get my own pair of Google Glass. Well, first thing I would like to say that this is not my own pair. I do not specifically own these myself. These belong to my broadcasting teacher, who you can follow on Twitter, at Don Wetrick, uh, over on Twitter. Uh, all of his links and whatnot will be in the description down below for him making this video possible. So back in April of 2013, April or May, around that time of year, we were selected, I say we as in the broadcasting program and the innovations class, we were all selected to be a part of this program that Google calls the Explorer program. The Explorer program is pretty much the beta testers for Google Glass, and so they get them before anybody else pretty much gets them. So like, like how I have these now, there are a lot of bugs with glass. I say a lot, meaning that there are some, but sometimes there's not that many. And they want us to basically go out and test how they look, how they feel, how people react to them. And so if there's anything wrong with them, we, that's what Google wants us to do. They want us to report back to them. They want to say, okay, so this part of the headset stopped functioning after this time, or the camera started lagging out things like that, Google wants us as explorers to be doing that. So why were we selected to use Google Glass? Well, we were selected for many reasons. The main reason, because we are using them for educational purposes. So what we are going to be doing with them, we're gonna be doing a lot of things in the educational field, and, and especially broadcasting. So broadcasting, if you've looked over on my Long Media Films YouTube channel, I have a video up called uh, Glass Does Franklin Football. And that evening, I pretty much wore glass and filmed it throughout the entire night. I tested the battery length, I tested how well the quality would do at low light and bright light, how it does, and pretty much how it performs. So one of the main questions that I get when I'm out and about wearing Google Glass is what do I see? Well the screen size on this, it may not seem like a whole lot to you and me judging by how how high res the screens are nowadays i mean we got 4k video coming on nowadays the screen is 640 by 480. now it might sound like a lot but when it's right here by your eye it sure does look really nice so what do i really see i mean the screen resolution yeah but what's actually being displayed so what's being displayed to me right now is actually nothing because i don't have glass on i can i can barely even tell that the prism is in my oh is in my field of vision. That's pretty much what Google intended for its design to be. They want it to sit at the top right corner or top left if they're working on that. I believe that they are working on a one for the, the lefties over there. Uh, I am actually right side dominant, so this actually does help me out a lot. So basically what I see when I either tap the side of the glass or if I look up, it'll display me the time and it'll say, okay glass, Spe meaning that this is where you would say an okay glass command. So some of the commands are, and I'll have all of these over here on the side. Uh, so there's OK Glass, record a video, take a picture, take a note. And all of these that come built in. So take a note, that's actually built in from another app. I believe it is Evernote. I haven't really gotten to play around with that. Uh, and that is because uh, Google hasn't really done any integration for iOS. I personally am an iPhone user. I do gladly love my iPhone. Uh, however, there aren't, there isn't full glass support like there is with Android. So I can't really use any of the apps uh, as of right now, uh, which I am recording this video on October 4th, 2013. You guys may be looking back five years from now, two years from now, or you may be watching this right after I post this video. So that's one of the biggest complaints that I have right now with glass, is that there is no iOS support. I understand that Google it runs Android, and I totally respect that. I understand where they're coming from on that. However, if you walk into a classroom and you ask, how many of you have iPhones? You'll get at least half the people in there to raise their hand. So what I'm saying, what I'm, the point that I'm trying to make here is that Google, if they brought up support for iOS, which I'm sure they will, uh, the, the support, they'll open so many markets I guess is the way to say it, you will be able to buy more and you will get more sales with glass pretty much. That's what I'm trying to say here. So if you add the iPhone support, you're buying into pretty much the other half of the world who is either not on Android or Windows Phone. All right, one of the last things that I wanted to bring up in this video was what do I 
want to get out of glass. So one of the main things that I want to test it, uh, since this is the Explorer Edition, I want to test it and to see how it can do in an educational field. So soon and very soon, uh, you can head over to youtube.com slash longmediafilms, uh, link in the description down below, and we are going to be doing uh, a video some called something similar to glass uses in education, uh, since that is the main reason why we do have glass today. So what, what am I going to be doing this video? Well, say I'm doing a chemistry experiment in chemistry class, and I have two chemicals in my hand, and I need to know which one is more more poisonous, which one is more radioactive. I can tilt my head without letting go of these two materials, and I can say, okay glass, Google which of these elements is more radioactive, and then I would insert the names of the glass, so it could be something like barium and bromine. I don't know. So those are the thing, some of the things that we could essentially be using glass for. A lot of people and a lot of teachers are a bit skeptical right now about, oh yeah, so they'll be looking up Facebook and Twitter. And yes, those are integrated with glass, but there are so many great uses right now in beta for Google Glass. So I could say, okay, Glass, Google, who is the author of Fahrenheit 451? And I can, and it'll pop up. Ray Bradbury was the author of this book. I'm not sponsor, sponsored by them or anything. It's just the first thing that came to mind. So those are a few of the excitements that I have with Glass. Uh, some of the things that I've noticed as a Glass Explorer uh, or beta tester, if you don't really like the term explorers, which I mean, that sounds pretty cool. There's a lot of uh, different things that we have coming out for Glass. Uh, I heard that later this month uh, of October 2013, Google is going to be opening up the SDK for Glass and letting more apps into the market, and that's just going to be awesome. So with that said, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you all enjoyed. I'm Ryan Long. Peace off.